Welcome to the Jongets Games tutorial for Yosemite. In this video, I'll be teaching you the rules to the game as it's being played, and I will be showing a full game today. Now, before I jump into that, I would like to ask that if you enjoy this video, that you please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. On top of that, if you'd like to directly support this channel and gain access to a variety of exclusive perks, then please go to patreon.com slash Games. Some of those perks include my opinions episodes, where I go in-depth about my thoughts, good and bad about all the games that I'm playing recently. Also, you can watch some videos early and advertisement-free, and gain access to an exclusive podcast feed where you can hear audio versions of all of my vlogs. Now, the final thing I'd like to ask here is if while you're watching this video, some part of the game really jumps out to you as interesting, then please comment about that down below because I'd love to see that kind of feedback. All right, let's now jump into the game. Out here, we have the game fully set up and ready to play for our two different players. Now, before I start, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles because I might make mistakes as I'm showing you the game, and that will let me put corrections on the screen where you should be able to see them. And I will also put corrections below this video in the top comment. Now, the only other thing I want to point out is the fact that these colored cubes do not come with the game. I'm simply using them to better differentiate between which player has these tiles. Well, let's start things off with a brief overview of the game. It's set in Yosemite National Park, California, and specifically there is a photo contest happening between two highly skilled photographers. Now this is a two-player only game, and over the course of it, these photographers are going to be wandering around Yosemite National Park. Now on a player's turn, they are going to be moving. They can either move one space orthogonally, or they could perform the movement specified by the animal where they currently are. For example, this cougar lets you leap, which takes your photographer to the edge on one of the lines from where they are at. You also have the black bears, which will move you two spaces and also move your opponent. The foxes are crafty and flexible. The rams let you run in a straight line, and these rattlesnakes let you actually reach out and bite your opponent, causing them to flee to a new area. Now, once you activate the movement ability of the tile you were just on, you then remove that tile and put it in front of you, and you will then use these tiles to take these photos, which are our main priority for the game. As tiles are removed, we will bring new ones in, and over the course of the game, we will find a variety of landmarks that will be placed down. We'll then compete to be the first person to get to these landmarks, and in addition to that, we are also going to be setting up camp, which is going to move this token on this track to give points at the end of the game, and we're going to be gathering fish, which will give us bonus movements that we can use to position our photographers into the best possible vantage points for taking a good turn. Once we've gone through this entire deck of photographs, the game will come to an end. At that point, we will score points for the photos we've taken, in addition to potentially extra points if the judges like our photos because we have a majority of these specific animals. We'll also score points for the camping track, as well as these landmark tokens, as long as we have matching photos for the tokens that we've taken. Once we add all of that up, the player with the most points will be the winner. Now, this was a very high-level overview of the game, and I will explain how all of this works in detail while we're playing. And on that note, let's now start the game. Now, we are going to play as the red player for today's tutorial, and we are also the starting player, so let's now take the first turn. Now, on each player's turn, there are three steps that are completed in order. The first of these steps is called Eat Fish, and this is actually optional. That lets us eat some of the fish that we have stored up in front of us in order to move our photographer before we perform a main action. Now, I don't think we want to eat any fish right now, so I'll explain how that works in greater detail later on, and that means we can skip past that optional first step to the mandatory second step, which is called Explore. Now, during the Explore step, we are going to choose one out of three different options. The first of these options lets you move your photographer one space orthogonally, and then you gain one fish, and then that will actually completely end your turn, and then the next person can go. The next option can only be activated if your photographer is currently on an animal tile. Now, you've probably noticed that all of these tiles are animals, but as we continue throughout the game, we're going to end up finding landmark tiles that can be placed out here. Now, that second option lets us actually perform the movement ability of the animal tile where we are at, and the third overall option is only usable if we happen to be on a landmark tile, which, again, we haven't seen just yet. Now, I'll explain how that landmark tile action works later on, because on our turn, I think we want to activate the animal movement where our photographer currently is. So let's focus in, and as you can see, we are currently on a rattlesnake. Now the rattlesnake movement effect lets us move one or two spaces, and with every move we go one space orthogonally in any direction. So we could go one, two, for example. We could also head all the way down over here, and we could just move one space as another option. 
so this is a relatively flexible action, but a big benefit for the rattlesnake is potentially landing on your opponent's spot. Now, if our opponent was over here and we had the rattlesnake, we could actually move onto this location, which will definitely scare that photographer which means we could then move our opponent's photographer one space in any direction of our choice. Now, during setup, we placed our photographer first, so I don't think it's too surprising to see that the blue player placed way over here so that they were not within range for us to move them with a rattlesnake action. So once again, we can move once or twice, and I think we just want to move once, and we'll head over here onto this cougar tile. So that's completed our rattlesnake movement, and after we finish an animal movement, we then take the tile and remove it from the board. Then we can optionally perform the bonus effect that's in the top corner. There are three of these options. One shows a photograph, another one shows a fish symbol, and the last one shows a camping symbol. The bonus action we can do is the one that's on the tile we just took, so in this case, as our bonus action, we can take a photo. Now this rattlesnake is in our hand, and now it's time to see if we can perform this photo animal tile bonus. It is worth noting that these bonuses are optional, but it is good to try and use them if possible. Now in order to take a photo, we are going to have to discard animal tiles from our hand that match the animals on one of the current photo cards. As you can see, there's always going to be two of these. The one on the left is in Yosemite Valley. It needs a red fox, a bighorn sheep, and a rattlesnake. And then the one on the right is at Bridal Veil Falls. That needs two cougars, one bighorn sheep, and then one red fox. So in order to take either of these photos, we have to discard the matching animals from our hand. Now, I do want to point out that at this moment when taking a photo, you can discard two animals that are the same type, and those can act as a wild animal of any type for the purposes of achieving that photo. In this case, we don't need to do that, though, because this Yosemite Falls photo needs a red fox, which we have, so we can discard that. It also needs a bighorn sheep, and we have that, and it needs a rattlesnake. I do want to point out that there's effectively no difference between these two bighorn sheep in our hand. The only difference is the bonus action in the top left, and that is only activated when you remove the tile from the board. So we will discard these three animals and then take this photo. Now, that photo is worth three points to us at the end of the game and we can simply put this face up in front of us. Now, at this point, we finished our explore step, and it's now time for the third step of our turn, which is called reset. In this step, if there are any empty spaces out here in the valley, we then draw a random tile from the top of the stack, and it looks like it's yet another rattlesnake, so we put that right over there, and during the reset, we look over here, and if there's an empty spot for a photo card, we draw one from the top of the deck, and we put it over there. This one is also in Yosemite Valley. It needs two black bears, one cougar, and one red fox, and it does score four points at the end of the game. Now, I've pointed it out already, but these photos do show locations within Yosemite Valley. Now, those are going to matter when it comes to the landmark tiles that we will find in this stack, and I'll explain how that works in more detail later on. Now, the final thing we have to do during the reset step is make sure we do not have more than 10 animal tiles in front of us. If we did, we'd have to discard down to 10, but obviously we have just one animal tile, so that is not a problem for us. Now, at this point, we're done with our reset step, which means we're done with our turn, and that means the blue player can now take their turn. They've decided to skip their optional eating fish step. They have two fish just like we do, but they don't think they need it right now. That means they're going to move into the explore step of their turn, and now they're going to activate the animal where they're currently at. This is a cougar with a fishing bonus icon on it, and the first thing they do is the movement action for the cougar. Now, the way this works is they are going to leap from the spot they are at to the edge of the grid in any one of the four directions in a straight line from where they are at. So they could leap here, there up there, or all the way down here, but they have to end on an edge. Now, they've decided to leap up here, and I do want to point out that they can leap over their opponent, and they could also potentially leap onto their opponent. If we were right here, they could leap onto this spot. Now, if they were to leap over their opponent or land on the spot with their opponent, then the blue player could then move their opponent up to two spaces in any directions that they choose. So, as you can see, the rattlesnake and cougar both give you options to move your opponent away from something that you don't really want them to be near. Obviously, we aren't there, though. We are on this spot, so we'll likely be doing a cougar action on our next turn. But for now, we can come back to the blue player. Now, they activated this, and there is an animal bonus icon that shows a fish in the top left corner. Now, the way this works is they can gain one fish by sliding up their fish tracking token. That's right up here, and they started with two fish, so now they go up to three. Now, if they happen to be at five fish and they got one of these bonuses, they would simply not gain any more fish because they would be at their maximum. 
They are obviously at three now, and now they can flip this over and add it into their hand. After that, they can reset by filling in this spot here, and it looks like that's a red fox with a photography bonus icon on it. All right, that's finished the blue player's turn, which means we can go again. And at this point, we have a single big horn ram in our hand, and we also are currently on a cougar. Now, that means we could activate this cougar and leap in any one of these directions. Although before that, we could eat fish in order to move our photographer. Now, the way this works is we could eat one fish to move one spot orthogonally. We could then spend another fish to move another spot orthogonally, and we could keep doing this until we've eaten all of our fish. This lets us position ourselves better for maybe a more effective turn than the one we were originally positioned for. At this point, though, I don't think we need to eat fish, so let's go right to exploring, and we're currently on a cougar, and I think let's activate that. Now, this lets us leap in any one of these directions all the way to the end, and I think we'll leap right over here, which means we did leap over our opponent. As I just mentioned before, this means that we get to move our opponent up to two spaces, and we fully decide where they go, but each of those moves does have to be orthogonal. Now, I'm feeling like the blue player might not be able to complete a photo right now, so I think let's move them onto one of these photo bonus spots so that they won't be able to perform that ability, or maybe to just force them into starting to eat their fish so that they can reposition themselves in a way that they like. With that in mind, I think we'll move them two spaces over here onto this red fox with a photo icon. Now, it's possible they are ready to take a photo, in which case maybe we've helped them out, but I figure it's possible this might get in their way. After the movement, we can now take this tile, and it does have an optional animal bonus. There are three of these bonuses, and this is the third type. This one specifically is called camping. Now, the way this works is we are going to look over here to the camping track, and since this is the first camping action of the game, we're going to take this token and then place it onto the one spot closer to us. Now, this is going to stay on this track for the rest of the game, and if we were to take another camping action, we would pull this towards us. Now, at the end of the game, we're going to gain points equal to the number next to this token. So if it's right here, we'd gain one point. Right here would get us three, and if it was as close as possible to us, that would get us five points. Now, if this was here and we did another one of these camping bonus actions, then we would leave the token where it's at, and then we'd gain one of these tent tokens from the supply and put it face up in front of us, and this is worth a permanent one point to us once the game is over. So there's definitely something to be said for out camping our opponent, pulling this token towards us, and trying to cash in more and more of these points. Of course, at the moment, though, it's right over here, which means it's worth one point to us. Well, we're done exploring, so we can now reset by filling this spot in. Oh, and it looks like we found the first landmark of the game. Now, there are five landmarks in the game, and this first one is Yosemite Valley. These were all shuffled up into this stack after we built this 5x5 five five grid of animals out here, and as soon as you bring a landmark out, you put it down onto that spot. And then we have to take the matching landmark token right over here and place that down on top of the newly revealed tile. So we can put it right over there. And that has opened up a new action option for a player who is on that spot when they do an explore step. And I'm sure we'll see how that works sooner rather than later. Well, we are done with our turn, so that means the blue player can go. And the first step of their turn is optionally eating fish. They've decided they are going to do that. In fact, they are going to eat two fish, which means they can move their photographer two times. And each of these moves does have to be orthogonal. In this case, the first move will go there, and the second move will go there. So they have just one fish remaining at this point, and now they're going to be on this bighorn sheep at the start of their exploration, instead of being on this fox. Next up, for their explore step, they are going to activate this bighorn sheep. Now, the movement pattern for the bighorn sheep lets you go in any one direction, as far as you want in a straight line. But there is a restriction, and that is that you cannot move onto or through any opponents. So if the red player was here, for example, we can move there, but we cannot move past it. Now, the cougar and the rattlesnake both do let you interact with your opponents, but the bighorn sheep does not. In this case, blue has decided they're going to use this effect to go straight down over here onto another bighorn sheep. Now, after that, they can take this tile, and the bonus there shows a fish, so that is going to get them one fish, which brings them up to two. Next up, they can add that bighorn sheep into their growing hand. They've got five tiles now, and then they can reset by refilling the grid, and that is a red fox with a fishing bonus action. After that, blue is done, which means we can go, and we are currently on a cougar, which means we could pounce here or there. It also has a camping bonus on it, and that is pretty good. We could, of course, eat some fish in order to move on to a different spot, but I think the cougar is fine. 
Part of that is because we can see that the Bridal Veil Falls right here does want two cougars, and we currently have one. It also wants one big horn sheep, and we have that as well, so we could be working towards that, although I have a suspicion the blue player is also working towards that photo. Now, one thing I definitely want to prioritize is getting over here to Yosemite Valley. Unfortunately, we can't land on that right now because when we pounce from the cougar, we have to go all the way to the edge, but that's okay. We're still getting ourselves closer. So I think we are going to pounce over here, and then we can take this. That has the camping animal bonus, so that will drag the camping token one more space towards us. After that, we can reset. It looks like there is a black bear right over there, and now we're done. So that means the blue player can now take their turn. After thinking things through, Blue is not going to eat any of their fish. They're simply going to explore from the spot using that bighorn sheep movement. That lets them go as far as they want to in any one direction. And they've decided to go four spaces up here to that red fox. After that, they can take this, and the bonus effect is camping. So that is going to drag this camping token one space closer to them, and then they can add this bighorn sheep into their hand. After that, they can reset by drawing a new tile. Oh, and it's another landmark. This is Bridal Veil vale Falls. These don't have to be on the edge, although both of the landmarks we've seen so far have been. We can, of course, take the Bridal Veil vale Falls token and put that right on top of that landmark. All right, blue is done, which means it's once again our turn. And I think we want to make our way onto this Yosemite Valley landmark. Now, if we wanted to, we could skip our fish-eating step and use this rattlesnake to move over there, but I think it's going to be important for us to get there on this turn. If we didn't, then it's possible our opponent could move us off of there. So let's eat one of our fish during the eating fish optional step, and that will let us move one space, and now we can do our exploration. Now, I mentioned way back at the beginning of the tutorial that one of the explore actions has to do with being on a landmark spot. Now, specifically, you can only do this if there is currently a landmark token on top of it, and there is. So for our explore action, let's explore this landmark. Now, the way this works is quite simple. We just take this token off of the landmark. We leave the landmark tile there on the board. In fact, once these are placed onto the board, they are never removed. Now, we can take this token and put it in front of us. And as you can see, that token is for Yosemite Valley, and that does match up with our one photograph. Now, having these tokens can get us access to extra points at the end of the game, as long as we have photos that match up with it. If we have this token by itself, it's not worth anything, but we already have a photo matching, so that is going to be worth points to us, and I'll explain how that works in more detail later on. Now, I do want to point out that we are going to have this for the rest of the game. There is no way for our opponent to take that away from us. After taking this token, our turn is simply over. We have no resetting to do because, of course, we didn't take any photographs or remove any animal tiles. So the blue player can now go, and they've decided not to eat any fish, so they'll move right on to exploring, and they're going to activate the red fox where their photographer currently is. The first thing they do is the red fox movement ability, and the way this works is they can move their photographer up to three times, and they can change direction as many times as they want to while doing this, but they are never allowed to move onto a spot where their opponent currently is. So that means blue could go one, two, three. They could also go one, two, three. There's just a lot of different options that you can do when you activate a fox movement. Now, after thinking through their options, they're going to move two spaces onto this black bear that has a photo icon on it, and that does seem like a bit of a tell that they're hoping to take a photo on their next turn. They have a whole bunch of tiles in front of them, so I suppose it's not that surprising. Now, of course, after they finish their movement, they can take this red fox. It does show a fish bonus action in the corner. So that means they will gain one fish, which brings them to three, and they can add this to their rather large hand. Now remember, at the end of your turn, you can't have more than ten tiles, and it looks like at this moment, blue does have seven. Although, again, they appear to be gearing up to take a photo soon. Now when they reset at the end of their turn, they have to refill this spot, and it looks like there is a cougar there with a photo bonus action. All right, blue is done, which means we can take our turn. And at this moment, we are currently on a landmark spot that does not have its token. Now, if we were to explore from this spot, obviously there is no landmark to explore and there is no animal, which means we'd have to do the third explore option. Now, we could, of course, eat our one fish and move off of the spot to do something else. But I think doing the third explore action makes more sense. So let's focus in. Now, I mentioned this before, but the way this explore action works is no matter what type of tile you are on, you can choose to simply move one space orthogonally, and then you gain one fish. 
Again, you could do this if you happen to be on an animal. You just decide not to actually take that animal tile or its bonus, and you move into a better position, and of course you gain that fish. Now we are here, and once again we can't do a landmark action because there is currently no token on top of it. So for our explorer, we are going to move one space, and I think we'll go down to this black bear. Again, we gain a fish when we do this action. So we'll increase our fish count to two, and then our turn immediately ends because we have nothing to reset. That means it's time for the blue player to go. And they've decided not to eat any of their fish, so they'll move right onto exploring, and they're going to activate this black bear where their photographer currently is. Now the black bear movement effect lets them move exactly two spaces in any one direction, and then they have the option of also moving their opponent one space in any direction. Now with this black bear movement, they can't move onto or through their opponent, they have to go somewhere else. But again, even just by doing this action, you can move your opponent. I suppose thematically the black bear roared, which caused their opponent to move towards a potentially safer spot. So once again, blue has to move exactly two spaces, and that has to be in the same direction, and they're going to head two spaces down over here onto that rattlesnake. Now they optionally can move us one space, and unfortunately, they're going to move us right back here onto Yosemite Valley, which we just spent our last turn leaving. Maybe we'll eat some fish to move off of that spot on our next turn. Um, now, either way, the blue player did move off of this spot, so they can add this black bear to their hand, and now if they want to, they can take a photo. In this case, it looks like they are going to do that. Specifically, they'll do this one that's at Bridal Veil Falls. That needs two cougars, one big horn sheep, as well as a red fox, and they do indeed have that in their hand. Once again, if they wanted to, they could spend two animals that are the same to act as a wild, but with this big hand, they were able to get everything that they needed. So, they now have four tiles in their hand, and of course that photo is worth four points to them at the end of the game. Also, it matches up with Bridal Veil Falls, and that token is down here, so it appears they are probably trying to head over here to take this token to match up with their photo and get some more points at the end of the game. Well, Blue is done exploring, so now they can reset. We need a new tile, and this one is a red fox with a camping icon, and then we need a new photo. This one is for Tulum Meadows. As you can see, that's a three-point photo. It needs a red fox, a black bear, as well as one cougar. All right, Blue is done, which means we can now take our turn. Although before we do that, I think now is a good time to talk about how the game will end. Now, as you can see, as we take these photos, we are drawing new ones from this deck. There were 10 total photos available at the start of the game, 8 in the stack, and 2 that were put face up. Now, the game is going to end immediately if we ever go to refill a photo spot after one is taken, and there are none left. That means that the game will end once 9 photos have been taken, and there will be still one next to the board. Now again, I said the game ends immediately, and we will then move into final scoring. Now we're going to get our points from a few different ways, and the first one is simply adding up all of the points on the photos that we've taken. Currently, the blue player has four points in photos, and we have three. Next up, we'll score points for camping. Again, we'll get one, three, or five points, depending on where this camping token is in relation to us and our opponents. Obviously, if it was over there, then our opponent would be getting three points and we'd be getting nothing. We also gain one point for every one of these camping tokens that we've taken. Again, we take these when we go camping, while the token is already as close as possible to us. After that, we are then going to score the judge cards. Each one of these shows a single animal and four points. Now what we'll do is we'll add up the number of that animal that shows up on all of the photos taken by both players, and we'll also add to that any of the tiles that match that animal in our hands once the game is over. Once we add that up, the player who has the most of that specific animal will get those four points, and if there's a tie, then no player will get those points. So in this game, we're trying to get more foxes and bears, and each time you play the game, you'll deal out two random judge cards, so that will vary. After that, the final thing we'll get points for is our landmark tokens. Now, each of these tokens will score points depending on the number of photos that we have that match. As I mentioned before, if we have no matching photos, then these tokens are worth nothing. If we have one matching photo for a landmark token, then we will gain two points. If we have two matching photos, then that token is worth five. Three photos makes us worth nine. And if you have the max of four photos that match, you'll get 14 points for that token. So there is definitely an incentive to try and take photos for landmark tokens that you've already taken. So we'll each add these points up, and the player with the most points will be the winner. If there's a tie, then the player who is closer to where the camp token currently is is going to break the tie in their favor, and if somehow you've gone the entire game without anybody doing a camping action, so it's still off to the side, then in that case, you both share in the victory.
Well, at this point, I think I've covered just about all of the rules to the game, and on that note, I think let's jump back into playing. Now, I believe it's currently our turn, and we're once again at Yosemite Valley, and I think let's eat a fish to move off of this spot. Now, we should pay attention over here to the photos that are currently available. One of them is for Yosemite Valley, and we have the Yosemite Valley token, so it would be very good to take this photo before our opponent. It does need two black bears, one cougar, and a red fox. Currently, of all of those, we just have one cougar, so we're not terribly close to that. But let's go ahead and go to this bear to start working our way towards that. So we ate one fish, and we can move on to this bear. And then for our explore, let's actually use this bear. Again, this means we can move exactly two spaces in one direction, and then we can optionally move our opponent one space. And considering we do need a red fox if we want to take this photo, I think we're going to head two spaces down here onto that red fox spot. Then we will take this black bear, and it's going to give us a fish, and then we can finish our turn by resetting. This spot is going to be a rattlesnake. Now, I do want to mention that if we go through this entire deck and the game isn't over, we'll simply shuffle up the discard pile and then continue to play the game. All five of these landmarks were shuffled in here, so once we go through this once, all of the landmarks will be out here for the rest of the game. All right, the blue player can now take their turn. Although technically, before they take their turn, I just realized that we could have moved them one space optionally. And considering they're currently on a camping spot and this token is closer to us, I think let's move them one space. We'll put them onto this bear. It shows a photo icon and it's unlikely they can take another photo. So maybe they'll eat some fish to move off of this or maybe they'll just take the bear and not get the benefit of that. So technically, we should have done that on our turn. And now the blue player can take their turn. They do have three fish available for them to eat. Now, one thing they are thinking about is the fact that we are pretty close to this Bridal Veil Falls. We don't have a Bridal Veil Falls photo, but of course they do. So if we took this, that would still be good for us because we'd be denying them victory points. Now, we are currently on a fox, so we could easily move on to that spot. We also have two fish, which means we could eat both of those and move over there on our next turn to take this token. And considering that is an option for us, the blue player has decided they don't want to leave that available. So they are going to eat two of their fish, bringing them down to one so that they can move two spaces over here. And then for their explore action, they're simply going to explore the Bridal Veil Falls. So they have this for the rest of the game, and that does indeed match up with their photo. So us getting closer to them, force them to spend some fish that they were probably hoping they didn't need to. That's finished the blue player's turn, so it's back to us, and we do want a red fox to try and complete this photo. There's a red fox here, and it has the uh, camping icon, so we can do a camping action. I think that's great. So let's go ahead and do a fox move, which again lets us move one, two, or three spaces in any direction. The only restriction is we can't move through our opponent. Now we do need another black bear to take this photo, and there's a black bear with a photo icon on it right over here. So I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to use this fox to move it down there, then we'll take this fox, and that will get us one camping action, which will pull this towards us once. All right, we can reset at the end of our turn. Oh, and it looks like we found Tulum Meadows. That's going to be right here for the rest of the game, and then we can put the matching token on top of it. Well, the blue player is now up, and they've decided they're going to spend their last fish, which brings them down to zero, in order to move onto this rattlesnake. After that, they'll activate this. That lets them move one or two spaces, and they can enter spots with their opponents. And they've decided they're going to go right on top of us. Now, when this happens with the rattlesnake, our opponent can then move us once. Now, they're going to move us right up here, because of course this was taken, and then they can do a camping action. And that is going to bring this right back over there. It's still on our side, but it's really close to theirs. Okay, we can now refill this, and it's yet another rattlesnake, and now it's time for us to go. Now, I was hoping to activate that bear to take that photo this turn, but unfortunately, we can't get there. Uh, when we eat fish, we are not allowed to go onto spots that have our opponents on them. Now, we are currently on a bighorn sheep, and that lets us move as far as we want to in one direction. Unfortunately, there are no bears on either of these axes. But I suppose we could head over here, and then on our next turn, use this fox to head up there. That is stalling us out a little bit, but it does help us out with our plans. I suppose another thing that we can do is simply move one space and take this Tulum Meadows token. We currently don't have a Tulum Meadows photo, but we'd have it for the rest of the game, and we'd be stopping our opponent from taking it. Although we can tell right now the blue player has no fish, and they are on a bear, so there's no way for them to actually get to this spot on their next turn. They're going to be heading over there or there, or they'll head one space and they'll gain a fish. 
you know what? I think we are going to eat one fish to move right over here. That lets us explore right here, which will end our turn, but it also keeps us close to this bear, and we know the blue player is going to be moving off of this on their turn. So then on our turn, we can start moving back towards it. All right, we are done, so the blue player can take their turn. And after considering their options, they're simply going to move one space, and when they do that, they will gain one fish. So they don't gain this bear either. I suppose they could have taken this bear, in which case we obviously would not have been able to get back over there, and something else would have come out. But it looks like that was not the case. Now the blue player is done with their turn, so we can go. We have one fish, and we're currently at Tulum Meadows. Now part of me wants to just move one space over here and to take a fish, although we can see that our opponent is on a rattlesnake. So if they wanted to, they could go over here and then force us to move away. They could probably tell by now that we are hoping to get into that corner. Now I suppose no matter what we do, we can't get away from our opponent. If we went there, they could still reach us and force us to move even farther. That being said, we do have one fish. So we could go here by eating that fish and then activate the big sheep. That would get us another fish, and then we could zoom way away from our opponent and maybe just work our way towards that after all. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. So let's eat one fish, and then we'll activate this bighorn sheep. That will get us one fish back, and then we'll move as far as we want to in one direction. So we'll go right over here, and then we can add this into our hand. All right, the next tile is a black bear with a camping bonus. Blue is up, and they aren't going to eat any fish. They do have one, and then they're going to activate this rattlesnake. That lets them move up to two spaces, and they're going to go here, and after that, they will do a camping action, which will pull this camping token closer to them. They can take this rattlesnake and then finish their turn by resetting. It looks like there's another black bear over here. There's a bunch of bears in this corner of the map. All right, blue is done, which means we can go, and I don't think we're going to eat our fish. We will simply activate this fox and then move three spaces in any directions of our choice, and we'll go one, two, three up to that black bear. I don't think our opponent can mess with us on our next turn to actually take that. Now, of course, we will take this fox, and that will get us one fish, bringing us back to two, and at the moment, we have seven tiles in our hand, so we are under the limit of ten. And it's good that we have a photo plan soon, because we don't have that much space left. Now we can reset by drawing a new tile. That is a cougar. And now blue can go. They are on a cougar, and they're going to activate this. That lets them go to the edge in one of these directions, and they're going to head all the way over here to that red fox with a photo icon. They will then gain this cougar, which will also get them one fish. They are also at seven tiles, it looks like, and they can finish their turn by drawing another bear. There really are a bunch of them in this corner. Blue is done, so we can go, and we're definitely not going to eat fish. We've been working towards this for a few turns. Let's now activate this black bear. That is going to move us exactly two spaces in one direction, so it looks like we actually have to go this way because the blue player blocks us in the other direction. Now we can optionally move our opponent, and I think let's do it, we'll move them right onto Yosemite Valley, which is not a place they want to be at the moment. Uh, after that, we can take this black bear, and then we can also take a photo as an option, and we definitely want to do this. We have finally set ourselves up for this one. It needs two black bears. It also needs a cougar as well as a red fox. So that is four of these tiles gone. That's worth four points to us at the end of the game, and it's also our second Yosemite Valley. Remember, if we have two matching photos for one of these tokens, the token is then worth five points to us. It was only worth two points with one of these photos. So that was effectively a seven-point play, gaining four points from this and three more points for improving the score on our Yosemite Valley token. All right, we can reset, and it looks like El Capitan has been found. That is over here in the corner, and we can put this token on top, and now the blue player can go. They're going to start by considering their tiles. Although I am getting ahead of myself, sorry about that, we do need a new photo out here. This one is for Yosemite Valley again, so a very good one for us. That needs two bighorn sheep, one black bear, and one cougar. Now, Blue's going to start their turn by eating one fish, and they'll move on to this red fox that has a photo icon. Then they will activate that red fox, which lets them move up to three spaces in any directions of their choice. And they've decided to move two spaces over here onto El Capitan. We could potentially chase them away from there with our rattlesnake on our turn, but it appears that is a risk they're willing to take. Maybe they don't really mind being on either of these spots either. Now, after that move, they do take this, and that does give them a photo icon, so they optionally can take one of these photos if they want. 
After considering their options, they are going to take this Yosemite Valley photo. They really don't want us to get our third. Uh, going from two to three matching with one of these tokens brings you from five to nine points. So that is four more points. Now, in order to do this, they need two bighorn sheep, one black bear, and one cougar. And they are going to use a cougar, a black bear, a bighorn sheep, as well as two rattlesnakes. Remember, you can discard two matching animals to act as a wild for any other type. So those two rattlesnakes are their other bighorn sheep. So they can put this in front of them, and that is worth four points to them. And of course, it's sort of worth more because they're denying us getting the extra bonus points because we have that matching token. All right, they can now end their turn by resetting. The next thing is Mariposa Grove. That is going right over here. It looks like that is all of our landmarks. And interestingly enough, four out of the five are on the perimeter. I guess we've just been doing a lot of perimeter things throughout this game. Uh, this one is here a little bit in the middle. And of course, where these landmarks are is going to differ every time you play the game. And again, once they're placed, they will stay there for the rest of the game. Now, we do have to put the Mariposa Grove token on top of that. And then we also need a new photo. This one is for Mariposa Grove. That needs two rattlesnakes, a black bear, as well as a red fox. All right, blue is done, which means it's time for us to go. And I guess the big question is, do we go over there and chase them off with a rattlesnake? Now, we do have two fish, so if we wanted to, we don't need to take a rattlesnake. We could just move on to something else that's better for us. We currently have two bighorn sheep, a cougar, as well as a fox. And if we look over here, this right over here needs a cougar as well as a fox. That's for Tulum Meadows, and we do have a Tulum Meadows token. So we're currently just a black bear away from completing this. Now, it doesn't look like we can get to a black bear on this turn, but we do have these two bighorn sheep, which could act as a black bear by discarding them to make a wild. Yeah, I think let's go for that on this turn. So let's eat one fish, which lets us move one space in an orthogonal direction of our choice. And I think we're going to go here to get that red fox. That way we could potentially use that red fox and work towards this Mariposa Grove over here. Of course, our opponent is likely also going to be working towards that. So we've eaten our fish, and now we can activate this fox. That lets us move up to three spaces in any direction of our choice. And I suppose one thing we could do is just go one, two, three. Head up to Mariposa Grove and potentially take that on our next turn so that we would have three of these tokens compared to the two of the blue player. It looks like they're probably going to be getting those two. Um, there is a Mariposa Grove photo out here, but also just locking these in, having a majority of them, is probably a good strategic idea for us as we get into the later parts of the game. So that is going to be our three movement. Now we can take this fox and then take a picture. We are going to take this one. As I mentioned, we're going to use a fox as well as a cougar and then two of our bighorn sheep to act as that black bear that we don't have. So we can discard all of these. That will be worth three points to us, plus another two points because, of course, having a single matching photo to a landmark token is worth two points. If we get another one of these, then that's going to be worth even more. So we'll definitely keep that in mind. Well, our turn is coming to a close, so we can reset. There is a black bear right there, and we need another photo. This one is for El Capitan. This one needs two rattlesnakes, a cougar, and a bighorn sheep. And I suppose I should mention that the game comes with 20 of these photos, and during setup, we shuffle them up and randomly remove 10 of them. So certain landmarks are going to be better than others in each play because, of course, half of them are not present, and you're just not going to know what those are until you make your way through that deck. At this point, it looks like there's just three of these cards left, so that means we are four photos away from the game ending. Well, we are done with our turn, so the blue player can go, and they're not sure if they should spend their whole turn taking that El Capitan token. They're going to consider their tiles for a little bit, and after thinking it through, they're going to go for it. They are going to take this for their entire turn. So that will go in front of them, and then that finish their turn. So it's once again our turn, and I already had this plan of trying to take this, so let's go for it. We will simply use our turn taking this token, so we now have three of them. Our opponent has two, and that means all of the landmark tokens have been claimed. So our quick turn is done as well, and it's now right back to the blue player. And they've decided to eat a fish to move one space. Then they will activate the move ability of this bighorn sheep, which lets them go as far as they want to in one direction. And in this case, they're just going to move one space onto that cougar. Then they can take this, and that has a camping icon, so that will drag the camping token one space closer to them. Now we can reveal the next tile. In fact, this is the last tile from that stack. This is another black bear. And that's finished the blue player's turn. 
So we are up. We currently have one fish that we could eat, and we have just a single fox in front of us. Now, this Mariposa Grove photo does need a red fox. It also needs two rattlesnakes as well as a black bear. So with that in mind, I think let's eat one fish, which unfortunately does bring us down to zero, and then move one space onto this black bear. We can then activate that, which lets us go exactly two spaces in any direction, although that's actually not too great. Now that I look out here, we can't move this direction because the blue player is blocking us. That direction doesn't work, and this direction plunks us down onto Yosemite Valley, which isn't really where I want to be. So maybe this isn't what we want to do. Now I suppose the blue player is going to move on their turn, so I think what we'll do instead is not eat this fish and just use our entire turn moving one space orthogonally, and then we'll gain one fish when we do that. So we have more fish, which keeps us flexible, and then we can probably activate this black bear on our next turn and maybe go this way to go to that black bear, which would get us a fish as well. We only need one black bear, I suppose, but either way, I still think this is probably a better course of action. All right, that has finished our turn, so the blue player can go and they currently don't have any fish to eat. So they're going to explore here and then activate this cougar movement that sends them in any one direction all the way to the edge. They could go here, and if they did that, they'd then be able to move us up to two spaces. And while that is very tempting to them, they've decided instead they're going to head over here. They, of course, have to leap all the way to the edge, and it appears they do like the idea of that tile for their next turn. Now, we are on a black bear, though, so if they don't move us, then we could potentially move them off of this spot, potentially onto Bridal Veil Falls. And they currently don't have any fish, so hmm, maybe they're going to rethink their turn as well. Yeah, they like the idea of that, but they don't want to leave us on a black bear spot that could mess with our plans, so they're going to mess with our plans. They are going to change course and use their cougar to leap right on top of us. That means they can move us up to two spaces, and it looks like they've decided to just shove us in the corner over here at El Capitan. Now they do get to take this, that has a cougar on it, and it also has a camping symbol, so that will bring the camping token as far as possible towards them. Now they are on another camping spot, so if they're able to do that on their next turn, they will take one of these permanent camping tokens, and the fact that this also had a camping icon was probably another thing that made them change their minds on their turn. All right, we now need to refill this, and we don't have a stack anymore, so we can shuffle up the discard pile, and then refill from the top of that. It looks like there's a rattlesnake right there. Well, blue is done, and that means we can go, and unfortunately we're once again on a landmark spot. Now we do have two fish, so if we wanted to, we could move away from this. We have one fox in front of us, so we definitely want to focus on getting some more of these animal tiles. I suppose one pretty good option for us would be eating both of our fish to move two spaces to go onto either one of these rattlesnakes. We want rattlesnakes anyway, and those give fish, so it'll give us a bit of a fish rebate. And I guess the real question is, do we want to be here, or do we want to be over there? Now, our opponent is on the black bear, so they can move us away from wherever we end our turn. Oh, and I suppose if we went here, we will then activate this rattlesnake, which means we could go there and then chase the blue player away from that spot. I think I like that. So, once again, we spent two of our fish, and now we'll activate this rattlesnake. We can go one or two spaces, and we'll just go one. Uh, the rattlesnake lets us go onto spots with our opponent, and then they are going to be chased off onto an adjacent spot, and I think we'll now send them over to El Capitan like they did to us on our last turn. After that, we can take this rattlesnake, and that will get us one fish, so we're back to one, which leaves us a little bit flexible, certainly more flexible than our opponent. All right, let's refresh the grid. <laughs> There's another rattlesnake, and now the blue player gets to go. They currently don't have any fish, so they can't eat any, and the only action they can do while on one of these landmarks that doesn't have a token is simply move one space and gain a fish, so that is going to be their turn. This means it's once again time for us to go, and I don't think we should eat our fish. Let's activate this black bear. That means we move exactly two spaces in one direction, and we'll go here, and we can move our opponent one space, so I think we're going to do that. <laughs> we're going to send them back over there to El Capitan. Now we can take this bear, and it does have a camping icon, so that will pull this back towards us. All right, we can reveal a new tile, and now Blue once again starts their turn at El Capitan, although they do have a fish now, so they could potentially use that to do something different with their turn instead of just walking one space. They can see that we are on a black bear, so on our next turn, it's very possible for us to move them again. After thinking their turn through, they've decided they're going to spend their fish to go here. Then they will activate this fox, which lets them move up to three spaces. 
and considering they can see that we're on a bear, they're going to use this move to go all the way onto this spot, which is on a position that is not next to any landmarks, so we can't send them back over there with our bear action. Then they can take this, and it does have a photo icon, and they are going to take a photo. In particular, they're going to go for this El Capitan one. That needs two rattlesnakes, as well as a cougar and a big horn sheep. They have the two rattlesnakes right here, and then they have a cougar and a big horn sheep for that. That El Capitan does match up with this token, so that's worth four points to them, plus two more because it's their first El Capitan to match up with this token. That is going to finish their turn, so we can reveal another tile. We see a big horn sheep, and then we can reveal another photo. This one is for El Capitan. That one needs a rattlesnake, a big horn sheep, as well as a black bear. Okay, it's time for us to go, and we are on this bear, but we don't actually need the bear. Now, it's true that having the most bears is going to be worth four points at the end of the game, but we're right next to a rattlesnake that has a photo icon, and we need a rattlesnake to take this Mariposa Grove photo. So I think we're going to eat our last fish, move on to this spot, and then activate that. This lets us move one or two spaces, and it looks like when we do this, we're going to spend all of our tiles, so we won't have any. So we need to look a little bit to the future. Now, part of me feels like we could go over here <laughs> and move our opponent away, but another thing that we could do is just move onto one of these bear spots to maybe activate that on our next turn to help vie for the most bear judge, and also both of these give fish, and we're currently at zero. I think that is what we want to do. In particular, let's go over here, although actually maybe this spot is better. If we activated this bear, we're going to move exactly two spaces. So from here, we could go there to the cougar, or more importantly, we could go there to that black bear, which would again help us out with this judging, and that has a camping icon on it, and we could use that to pull this token back towards us. So I think this is going to be the direction we go. Then we're going to take this rattlesnake, and we can take a photo. As you can see, we have two rattlesnakes, a red fox, and a black bear, and that is exactly what we need for this Mariposa Grove photo. So we'll take that photo. That is our first Mariposa Grove photo, so we have one for that. So that's four points, plus two more points for being the first matching one there. After that, our turn can come to an end. We need another animal, and there is a red fox, and then we need another photo, and this one is another one for El Capitan. Wow, maybe it was a good thing for the blue player to take that one right over there. Um, they have one of those already, and now both of the ones that are available are for El Capitan. Now, our turn is done, and it's worth noting there's just one photo over here. When we look out here, we have four photos, and our opponent has three, so we are two photos away from the game ending. Now, we currently have zero tiles, and our opponent has two, so it might be a little bit until those photos happen, but either way, let's now see what the blue player decides to do on their turn. They currently don't have any fish, so they can't eat any, and they're just going to activate this big horn sheep. That lets them move as far as they want to in any one direction, as long, of course, as they don't run into their opponent, and they're going to head in this direction onto that rattlesnake. They can then take this, and it does have a camping icon on it, so that will bring this once again to the spot that is closest to them. After that, we can see a new tile, and this one is a rattlesnake, and now it's time for us to go. Currently, we have no fish and no tiles, really, so I think let's just activate this black bear. That is going to get us one fish, although technically, before we get that fish, we do move exactly two spaces. I mentioned before that this seemed like a pretty good combo, so I think we're going to go for it. Both of these photos do need bears, although we don't necessarily need two, but I think going for that to vie for this judge is still probably a good call. Also, we can see this spot would do a camping action to pull this back, whereas both of these have photos, and we're certainly not taking a photo on our next turn. So we move two spaces, and then optionally we can move our opponent. Um, I think let's do that. Let's move them onto this cougar that does have a photo on it, and they have three tiles, so it's possible we're actually helping them out, but I think we're going to give it a go. On their previous turn, they had the option of going over here to a photo spot, and they chose fish instead, so that leads me to think that maybe they can't take that photo. Uh, either way, that's what we're going to do, and it is optional. We could leave this there if we want to, but I do kind of like the idea of them continuing to not have any fish. Now we can take this and get one fish of our own, and then we can refill the spot. That's another black bear with the fish icon. Okay, we are done, which means the blue player can go. I suppose one of the reasons why moving our opponent here made a little sense is because we can see that currently neither of these photos need a cougar. 
Well, they can't eat any fish, and they could move one space and gain a fish, but instead they're going to activate this cougar. Now, I didn't think this entirely through, because now it looks like the blue player is going to use this cougar to, of course, leap to one edge, and they're going to leap onto this edge where we are at. It seemed like it made sense to move them onto that spot, but maybe we actually made our lives worse by doing that. When they pass over or land on top of us, they can then move us up to two spaces, and in this case, they're just going to move us one space onto this landmark. After that, they will take this, and it does have a photo icon on it, but unfortunately, it looks like they can't take a photo. So maybe ultimately, it was a good idea to move them onto that spot to deny them that bonus action, although I was hoping to take that bear with that camping symbol. Then again, we didn't desperately need a second bear, but either way, I'm getting ahead of myself. Now, Blue can finish their turn by drawing another tile, and that is a bear, and now we can go. Now, we, of course, want to take either of these, and we already have a bear, and both need bears. This one over here needs a red fox, though, and we do have a fish. So I think let's spend that one fish eating it, which lets us move one space, and we'll go here. That is a red fox that we can activate, which means we can go up to three spaces. And if we're trying to take this photo, we need a rattlesnake in addition to that red fox. So let's just move one space. I suppose our opponent might take this bear and then move us off of that location, but this does still seem like a pretty good spot for us to potentially take that rattlesnake and immediately take that photo. We'll see if they get in our way. Either way, we can take this fox, and then that has a camping action on it, so we'll once again pull this away from that closest spot to them. So far, none of us have taken any of these permanent tent tokens. Again, that happens when you do a camping action, while this token is as close as possible to you. It definitely makes sense to try and stop your opponents from doing that, and this has been over there for quite some time. Fortunately, we've been able to keep pulling it back before the blue player can make that happen. All right, we are done, and the next tile is a cougar, and now the blue player can go. They don't have any fish, so they are going to activate this bear. Of course, they could just move one space and take a fish, but they like the idea of this camping action to once again move that closer to us. Now, before they decide how they're actually going to do their turn, they're going to take a look at their hand, and they've decided they are going to activate the black bear's movement. They can go exactly two spaces in one line, and they'll go there. They could also move us one space, and they want to do that. They noticed we went here, which means they could probably infer that we're trying to take a photo. And they can look over here and, just like we did, tell that there's no cougars. So they're going to move us one space over here onto a photo with a cougar. So considering there's no fish, it looks likely we're not going to be able to take that photo. Now that does leave us in line with them, but they're assuming that we're not going to want to jump over them onto this landmark over here. All right, after that movement, they can do this action, which will once again drag this camping token back to the spot that's closest to them. All right, the next tile is a cougar, and now we can go. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a fish, and we don't really want a cougar, but um, our options are doing this cougar action to jump here or there. I suppose we could go there or there as well, but those don't seem very good. Uh, or we could just move one spot and gain a fish. Our opponent is currently on a bear again, so we could move here, and of course our opponent could move us right back off of it. But I think instead of doing that, let's activate the cougar. That means we can go to the edge in one of these directions, and I think we'll head over here to this bighorn sheep. It has a fish icon on it, so we'll potentially get that if we activate that on a future turn. We of course take this, and of course we don't take a photo, so that was a pretty good blocking move from our opponent. Now we can refill this, and it's a red fox, and then our blue opponent can go. Now they are on a bear, and they're just going to activate that. They can move exactly two spaces in one direction, and they are... Hmm, actually, they have a couple good options. After thinking it through, they're going to head here. They figure that kind of blocks some of our options. Now they can move us, and they're going to. <laughs> they're going to move us over here onto El Capitan. Now they can take this bear, and that does give them a fish. That's the first fish they've had in a while. Now that is going to bring their turn to a close. Of course, we do need a new animal, and that is a bighorn ram, and now we get to go. We have no fish, and we're on a landmark, so let's just move off of that. And I think we should probably go here to try and continue to fight this camping token back. When we do this move, we just gain one fish, and that finished a quick turn for us. Now the blue player can go, and they're going to activate this fox. That lets them move up to three spaces. And in order to figure this out, they're going to take a look at their hand. After taking a look at their options, they are going to move here, just one space. And now they are going to take a photo. Now in this case, both of the photos are for El Capitan. 
and I think they're going to go for this one. That needs a red fox, a black bear, as well as a rattlesnake. They have a red fox here, and then they're going to get rid of two other red foxes for the rattlesnake. And then they have a bear. So they can discard these to take that. This is their second El Capitan uh, location. Then after that, they can reset. The next tile is a big horn sheep. And then the last photo is a Yosemite Valley. Now, as soon as one more photo is taken, the game is going to end. And I have to admit, I'm a little worried by the fact that the blue player went onto a spot that shows a photo. Now, assuming they're trying to take a photo, I think we should probably try to stop them. And we can do that by eating a fish to then move on to this rattlesnake. Then we can activate the rattlesnake, which lets us go one to two spaces. And let's go here. And then since we landed on the spot with our opponent, we can move them one space. From here, I think we're going to move them there to try and get them as far away as possible from any of these photo icons. They currently only have one fish, so they can only move one space. And right now, it looks like they won't be able to get to a photo. Then, of course, we're going to take this, and that has a camping action, which will drag this token back towards us. Okay, uh, we played a little bit of defense. We can flip the next tile, and it's a bear, and now the blue player can go. Huh, I just realized, actually, there is a photo spot down here, which is available to them. Uh, the question really is, did they just need a photo, or did they need that specific photo? After thinking through their options, they are going to eat their one fish, and then they're going to go over here onto that bear. Then they're going to activate this bear. They will move two spaces over here <laughs> onto another rattlesnake that has a photo icon. Um, so maybe they really did need that exact tile. And then, of course, this bear lets them move us one space if they want. And they have decided to move us onto this bighorn sheep. After that, they can take the bear. They are not actually going to take a photo with this action, though, and then they can add this into their hand. All right, the next tile is a cougar, and it's our turn. Now, the blue player does seem to be threatening to end the game on each one of their next turns. And on this turn, I don't think we can actually do anything to stop them. We currently have no fish. And we are on a bighorn sheep, which is obviously not an offensive animal, which is probably the main reason why blue moved us onto there with their bear action. Now, it feels likely the blue player is going to end the game on their next turn, but in case they don't, let's try and do something smart with this turn. And when we look over here, we actually have everything that we need for this Yosemite Valley photo. That's a red fox, a cougar, and a rattlesnake, and we have all of those. We just need to take the photo. So I think we'll activate this sheep, and then we'll move over here onto that photo spot. We can then take the sheep and get one fish, which leaves us a little bit flexible. And if we get to take another turn, we've set ourselves up to be able to take the final photo of the game. Now we do need to reveal another tile, and now the blue player can go, and they are going to activate this rattlesnake. They can move up to two spaces, and they will go there, and then they will take this, and they do have the option of taking a photo. And it looks like they are going to do it. Uh, they really needed a rattlesnake in order to take this El Capitan photo. That needed a black bear, a bighorn sheep, and a rattlesnake. And they do indeed have those now. So they can discard these. They still have a couple of tiles in their hand. They can put this in front of them. That's their third El Capitan card. And at this point, the game is going to end immediately because when they go to reset, there are no more photographs to refresh this spot. So that means we can now move into final scoring. And the first thing that we will score is our photos. We have four, and our opponent unfortunately got to five. When we look at these photos, it appears we have 14 points total. When we look up here to our opponent with their five photos, they were able to get up to 18 points. And now we can score for camping. It's on the three spot closer to our opponents, so they are going to gain three points from that. And then if any of us had any camping tokens in front of us, we'd get one point for each of those. But it appears throughout this entire game, we were both able to stop either one of us from taking any of these permanent camping points. After that, it's now time for the judges. We can start here with the red fox, so we can reveal all of our hands and then count up the number of red foxes that show up in our photographs, as well as in the tiles that we currently have in our hand. Our opponent appears to have only two red foxes total. And then we have one, two, three, four, five. So maybe we overcommitted to that. Either way, we have the most, so we will get this for four points. After that, we can count up the bears. Our opponent has one, two, three, four. And then down here, we have one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> so we just barely have a majority on that. So we won both of these judge cards. So that is four more points for us. Finally, it's time to score the landmarks. As I mentioned before, every one of these tokens is worth zero points if you have no matching photos. They're worth two points if you have one matching photo, five points if you have two, 
nine points if you have three, and 14 points if you have four. Now, over here, we have two Yosemite Valley matching this token, so that is going to be worth five points. Then we have one Tulum Meadows for two points and one Mariposa Grove for two points. So that means, all told, we got nine points for our landmarks. After that, we can score our blue opponent. They have one Bridal Veil Falls, so that is worth two points, but then they have three El Capitans, so that is worth nine points right there. So that's nine plus two, which means they got 11 points from their landmarks. The final thing that we have to do is add up these points, and it looks like we ended with 31, and our opponent ended with 32. So unfortunately, we have lost this one, and even if we had one more point and tied our opponent, they would have still won because the tiebreaker is whoever this token is closest to, and it is closer to them. So our blue opponent is the winner, and we are just behind, and that is going to complete this full game of Yosemite. And at this point, I've also taught you all of the rules to the game, so that's going to bring this video to a close. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.